Hello City Skylines fans, I'm Soxway Up and welcome back to Lake Soxide. If you're new to this series, check out the link in the description for the playlist and check it out from the beginning. I think you'll enjoy it. Today's episode, we're going to finally take care of some of the budget issues as well as the low happiness in our city. If you're not new to this series, you know that we kind of reverted the way we're playing and we're going back to a little bit more milestone base. We don't have unlimited money anymore, so the budget's a little bit important to us, but everything's unlocked, so those demands are all over the place. So it's a little bit of a mistake we made at the beginning of this series and didn't want to start a new series off with adjusting the way we're playing, but I do enjoy playing this way much better. So series going forward are going to be played with milestones, without unlimited money, progressing the way the game was built, but adding in a lot of detail along the way. As you can see, we're already deep into our first build. We're adding our first city park to Lake Soxide. The property value is very low. People's happiness in the residential was very low. So this is one of the ways that we're doing that. Off camera, I also added in some of the basic parks to the neighborhoods as well to kind of offset that a little bit. Since this city park is a little separate from the residence, residential area, we do surround it with houses afterwards and a high school coming up next, but that wasn't going to be enough. So we did add the, like I said, the regular parks to some of the residential areas to help boost there. There's also some mods that seem to be interrupting or conflicting with some of the basic setups or basic features of City Skylines right now. Like happiness doesn't show up correctly. The park leisure stuff doesn't show up correctly. I'm not sure what's doing that as well as the resources don't show up correctly. Like ore, it, the whole entire map, like I mentioned before, shows up as ore, even though it's not that way. Not really sure what's going on with that, but we're getting around it. It's fine. We'll move forward. We'll figure it out for the next city. But here you can see we're starting to do a little bit of a layout of the park area. And next we're going to add in the attractions for the families and for the kids to be able to hang out and play there. And then we kind of just place them where we want them and then add pathing to it. Instead of building the paths first and then forcing things to go on them, I decided to place the playgrounds and trampolines and such where I wanted them. And then we build the paths around it so that we can dictate exactly how we want this park to look. It's not the best one I made, but I think it turns out pretty good once the entire area is populated. And here you can kind of see what I was talking about. We now are adding the pathing to connect all of the different playgrounds together. It makes the park look complete. I'm not sure. I don't think this is going to hit five stars. We might have to add a little more attractions in here to get there eventually. We don't hit that on this episode. I think it gets up to three stars by the end here, but that wasn't really our goal. Our goal was to increase the happiness of the residents, and it definitely did that. You can see our budget is still a little out of whack. It's going from negative 10 down to like negative 20 and then back up to like positive four. You know, later on, we're gonna add an industry area to take care of that and using the industry's DLC definitely helps out with that because it can maximize our profit once we get the import and outport and export stuff all taken care of. But here we're doing a little bit of detailing, a little bit of styling after we add these paths. I'm gonna let this little part of the time-lapse finish up and I will be back with you shortly.
All right, this next section we're going to build is our high school. I can't believe we made it into seven episodes without putting a high school down, but it happened. So here we, we took a look at the education. We saw that some of the houses weren't upgrading because they needed more education. So the natural progression here is to get the high school education going, eventually figure out a place for the university, but that'll be for a later date. So here we're just building the basic uh, parking lot. Again, I'm starting to get the hang of this. Forgot to uh, upgrade those roads to switch the borders around, but I'm definitely digging the way that these parking lots work. And I like the blend of using them for these major complexes like a high school, elementary school, shopping centers, and then throwing in those other play, uh, parking lots that we use in the industry areas and some other areas in the city as well. I definitely like these better than the uh, parking lot roads that we've been using in previous series, and I think we're going to stick with them. One of the things I kind of regret at this point is the color of the concrete. I think I'd make it a little bit darker and we might even go in, potentially adjust that later on. We'll see. Next, we're starting to play around with some different buildings that we want to use for this high school. I don't like these first ones, so then we replace them with other ones that I think turn out nice. I like these these different schools that you can build next to each other and the buildings actually go together. I don't know the actual like technical term for that, but I love it. Great addition to City Skylines. It allows you to fit in more students as well as having more unique buildings. These asset creators, they are awesome. So here we add some electricity and then the next things we're going to do here is add a football field and a soccer field and get the, you know, that's high school. So we want to have some sports at our high school. I think that makes it pretty realistic here. As you see, we're popping down the football stadium with the track around it as well. It looks like the high school's mascot are the Wildcats. And then we find a little place for the soccer field. And that pretty much wraps up the main parts of the high school. We do a little bit of detailing. We'll probably come back and do some more high level detailing in another episode, but that pretty much wraps up the high school. So in most of these episodes, we have been doing detailing of these parking lots. I wanted to do one of the smaller ones in this in case people are new and haven't seen how we do that yet. This one, we actually use some of the big decal mud as well. This is a commercial area, but I feel like it gets a lot more industrial type traffic to it because of the type of buildings they are. Maybe this is where some of the industry folks go and buy their clothing or something. So maybe their vehicles are a little bit more dirty. And it looks like we have a little bit of areas where water is collected from our previous rainstorm. So we quickly jump into now the first industries DLC area of the series. As we mentioned before, it's our ore industry. At this point, money's getting tight and I knew it was going to be a problem. We eventually take out a loan to get us to move forward. Didn't really want to do that, but we took out the big boy because I wanted to keep going and get the budget really under control. And I'm going to break one of the first rules I learned in speech class in high school way back in the day. It was definitely my favorite class that I took. It taught me how to be a public speaker. I used that in my professional career or my, you know, actually paid day job. But here's where we're going to break it. I don't really like this area. I don't like the way it turned out. I think there's a lot more we could do to it to make it better. And I'm going to have to revisit that after this episode. It was one of those things that I started building because I wanted the income from it and didn't necessarily think through the design. It's not bad, I just think it's very plain. I think we could have done a lot better and I think we can reorganize the buildings a little bit better long term, but we'll see. Let me know what you think if you like it. It's, it's getting to the point where I feel like it's a lot of rinse and repeat from other series and I know that's how City Skylines is, but I think we're gonna add some, probably some buildings to this area next episode to make it not just stand out as these industry DLC, buildings i do want to blend in maybe some of the regular old school industry buildings in here as well so that's where we take the loan so we can speed up so we start adding in more of these extractor buildings and then the other buildings as well to start processing the gosh i can't think of the words the metal and the glass we constantly come in here and we take a peek at what's going on with our output we want metal and glass to be consistently output outputted 
we want consistent output of the metal and glass, but we also don't want to be importing goods from other cities. You can see right now there's a good chunk of that pie that is at the import. So we're not going to be able to maximize our profit at that point. So we do add some more buildings to make sure we're extracting enough ore from our own city to where we're not importing them to then create the metal and glass. If you've used industry DLCs, you know there's a balance to this and you kind of play around with the amount of buildings that you have until you get it right. Sometimes you have to kind of just let it go and let the buildings catch up as well so you can get ahead of yourself. That's why I'm running it at times three right now. I want these buildings to start getting fully processing and figure out where we're at. And at that point, we weren't importing anything, so I felt pretty confident about it. Later on, it changes a little bit, but I think we're okay. You can see our profits jumping up anywhere between negative 2,000 and then all the way up to positive 6,000 in this area, which is ideal. Industries DLC, again, if you've played with it before, you know that it causes your income to fluctuate based on what they're exporting, which isn't really that bad of a thing. It's just a little something to keep track of and to keep in the back of your mind as you're starting to build out the industry DLC complexes or, or zones, I guess you would call them, or districts. Uh, yeah, just something to keep an eye on. And I like the way we got our profit taken care of. Again, some more detailing to come in the future, more buildings in that area, and I think we'll get it in a better place for us. All right, to start closing out the episode, we start adding in some parking lots to the industry area as well as we're starting to notice that that residential demand has spiked exactly how we wanted to. Next episode, we are going to do a major residential increase to the city, potentially some high dense buildings. We'll see if anybody's familiar with socks way up cities. I tend to use skyscrapers sparingly and high dense buildings. We'll see. I think this town is, it's a very much a small town at this point. We're still at 3,700 people because we're using realistic population. So just like the name of the mod says, realistic, you only have one household per low density building. And then the high density buildings have a lot more than vanilla city skylines. If you haven't checked that out, check out that mod. I'm personally a huge fan of it because it makes the cities more realistic when it comes to how each area is populated and how the population grows of the city. It also does some tuning to the industry and res or commercial buildings as well. Again, check it out if you haven't. It's a pretty cool mod. But here we're adding in one more commercial building or complex to the end of this episode. I wanted to, I wanted to get that commercial demand as low as possible leading into the next episode, and that's why we added this out here. Also, I look at it as a nice little shopping area for our industry employees to be able to spend at lunchtime or right after work. They want to pick up something on the way home. That's at least how I think about it. This is also our attempt of cleaning up this area and connecting the two industry buildings or industry sections together. If you've seen the way I build buildings, I like to build these sections and then bring them together in the long term. And that's what we're going to do here. All right, that's going to wrap up another episode of Lake Sockside. Again, I'm Socks Way Up. Thanks for hanging out. To recap, we got a little bit of an ore industry going. We got a little bit of a high school going. As we scroll on over here for that, another little commercial area here as well. I would also say that we finished out this second residential area, kind of finally got that all complete. We got it all detailed like we want so we can move forward to expanding in other areas in the next, the next upcoming episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you on the next episode.